G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring. Today I was gonna to film a bit of a final video review of the MDC Forbes 13 Plus. So I've got Tiff on the camera, she's helping me out today. Um, how long have we had this boat? Did we get it in March? Nearly a year. Yeah, it's been 11 months I think we've had this now. Um, so in 11 months we've done about 25,000, 25 to 30,000 Ks on it, including five months living full time in it as we traveled around WA. If you haven't seen it, we did a full video series on that. Um, it was about 26 episodes, so have a look back at the channel um, and you can follow us along if you want to do that. But um, getting back to the van, uh, it came with a 12 month warranty. So it's just been in for a final um, checkup with MDC to fix up a few little things that went wrong. So I thought I'd run you through that today. Um, I'm gonna break that up into things that went wrong because of um, us mistreating it, things that went wrong because they just failed um, and then I'll give you a bit of an idea of things that didn't go wrong, but, but just little niggling things that kind of was, you know, annoyed us about the fan. And then our final kind of review, which if you can't be bothered waiting to find out about, it's gonna be overwhelmingly positive. Um, we are really happy with this fan. So things that failed um, because of us. Uh, this hatch, this hatch uh, which became our pantry, um, opens downwards like this, and I only had one of the latches done up We've driven away and ripped the thing off, broke the hinges. So. Oh, stop, 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 stop. You need to get out. So that stop, 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 you heard me on the camera just before, was our entire pantry door ripping off. We haven't hatched it, we haven't locked it properly, and we've driven off, and the whole thing has just completely snapped off. Quick release. What a mess. Here's the leftovers of the bolts. <laughs> So uh, warranty sorted that out for us, but really they didn't have to because that was my fault. So I bent the door, broke the hinge. Um, they fixed that for me, which was really good of them. Um, uh, what else went wrong because of us? Oh, a few times off road, we did a few rough roads. We did um, the Gibb River Road, um, part of the Tanami track. We drove into the Bungle Bungles, right up to Cape Levique. Um, uh, we, yeah, we did quite a few rough roads and we were never too concerned about taking the van because we had a lot of confidence in it. Um, but a couple of times we hit washouts a bit too fast and we probably got the thing airborne um, and I ended up knocking one side out of wheel alignment um, and I wore down a tyre quite quickly and I had to replace the tyre. Um, I just used, I chucked one of the spares on so it, this, this van comes with two spares um, and now one of them's bold because uh, it went out of wheel alignment. Uh, one thing I will note is that when I tried to book this in for a wheel alignment a lot of companies asked me what brand van it was. Um, as soon as I told them it was Chinese, they were a little bit hesitant to bring it in. Uh, when I told the company that I ended up going with that it was an MDC Forbes, he said, oh, that's cool, yeah, I can do that. Uh, these have more adjustment than other Chinese import vans. So um, apparently the suspension is better set up than some other imports. On that note, so I knocked one side out of wheel alignment. Um, I also had a little bit of play in one of the wheel bearings. So halfway on our trip uh, on the side of the road before we set up camp and I noticed one of the wheel bearings had a bit of play. So I pulled that hub off and I tightened that up. Um, I inspected the wheel bearing and it had no damage or anything. It looked all right. So it went back in there, just got nipped back up. So that was a minor issue. Um, I, they did give me spare wheel bearings with this um, when I picked it up. And they, I think they recommend replacing the wheel bearings it was either every five or 10,000 Ks, which is fairly regular. Um, I haven't done that. Like I said, we're on around 25,000 to 30,000 Ks already. Um, so I probably should um, uh, pull those hubs off again, have a look at the brakes and have a look at the wheel bearings, probably just replace them, a bit of preventative maintenance. So that was pretty much all things that went wrong that were, were, that were due to us. Oh, um, was the clip on the back. Oh yeah, I also broke it. Tiff's behind the camera telling me I also broke a, um, a little bit of wiring, a clip on the back, uh, yeah, which I didn't even tell MDC about. Um, it wasn't in my warranty report when I put it in, uh, but they still noticed it and replaced it anyway, so that was really good. I, we actually found warranty really easy um, to deal with. 
Uh, so yeah, that sums up things that went wrong because of us. Uh, things that just went wrong um, that shouldn't have. Uh, this handle, this grab handle here. For whatever reason, after our first couple of weeks of ownership, the whole thing starred up like it, like it cracked. I think it was probably because off-road there's a little bit of flex and stuff in this thing and there's no give in that hard piece of um, plastic, so I think it, it cracked. Now, MDC replaced that under warranty, no dramas. Um, we had it back for about a week or so. We went on one trip and Tiff said, it's cracked again. Yeah, it's you can not, see it's starred. It's not, a big, it's not a big deal, it's just a cosmetic. Yeah, seems to only be the surface. It's not like structural or anything, is it? Yeah. So it's not as bad as it was before and it never got any worse the last time either. Um, but for whatever reason, it's cracked again. So that, that seems to be some sort of issue with, um, with that handle. Uh, but it doesn't affect, it's still, it's still rigid. It doesn't affect the usability. It just doesn't look very good. So it's a bit of a bummer. Uh, another thing that went wrong that was quite annoying, um, the electric awning. So these awnings, I'll show you later setting this thing up in this video, um, but these awnings, you press a button, it winds out. It's all electric, which is really, really, really cool when it works. Um, unfortunately, the motor burnt out. I don't know why, um, but yeah, burnt out. Now you can still manually set the thing up. It comes with a big windy swizzle stick thing, um, so you can wind it out. Uh, so we were still able to use it, but it was a bit of a pain in the bum because one of the coolest things about the van was having that electric awning. Uh, so I don't know why that failed, but it did. Again, uh, MDC warranty were really easy to deal with and they just replaced that entire um, motor assembly and it works fine again now. Um, other than that, some of the silicon in the bathroom around the toilet, it started to separate. Um, don't know why, but the silicon's pulled away from between the walls and the toilet there. Um, they've just cut it all out and re-siliconed it, so that's cool. That was a pretty minor thing. And then one other little thing uh, in the kitchen, yeah, this latch here just wasn't it wasn't actually um, clipping in like that, so I, I had to tighten that to keep it from popping open, but they fixed the latch now. They've readjusted it so it stops itself. Because what was happening is I'd slide this whole kitchen in, and then this would come open on the corrugations and whatnot, and then when I went to pull it out, it was hitting this bar work and I couldn't get it out, so I was having to slide knives and stuff up there to try close it, so it was a bit of a pain in the bum. Other little minor things, um, when the awning's out, there's a couple of... Um, flapper bars that, that come with this awning and the plastic clips on the end broke. So uh, they, MDC just replaced the entire bar. I only needed the little plastic end clip, but they just gave us whole new bars. So that's cool. Now I've got spares as well. And the water connection um, to plug uh, mains water into the um, side of the van, that little clip came loose. So they've repaired that as well. So all pretty minor things, certainly no show stoppers. Um, warranty was really easy to deal with. All you do is you jump online, um, you give them all your details so they know who you are, and then you write a little bit of a blurb about what's happened um, and some photos if you've got them of what you need repaired. And then they have a look at it, they assess it, they give you a phone call to sort out um, you coming in and dropping off the van. And one of the cool things was they don't call you in to repair your van until they've organized getting all the parts to, the, to your local um, workshop for me was Welshpool in Perth. Um, so it probably took two or three weeks until I was able to bring the van in. And then turnaround, I think was was only a day, wasn't it, Tiff? Oh, we had a COVID lockdown. It should have been one day, but um, I couldn't I couldn't pick it up because of the COVID lockdown. Uh, they were allowed to work because they're an essential workshop. So they actually delivered the thing for us. So they were really, really good to deal with. Um, I, know a little, I know a lot of people are quite concerned about dealing with MDC. Um, with warranty and whatnot, but in our experience, and I can, I can only go by that, um, they were absolutely brilliant to deal with. So overall, uh, we're really happy with the van. We reckon um, the value is brilliant. I mean, it was about 48,000 when we bought it. I think now they've got up to 52, 53, something like that. Is that right, Tiff? Yeah, about 52, 53 grand. Um, what you're getting for your money, I think is pretty good compared to anything else. It'd be great to buy Australian made if you could get this much. Um, for that kind of money, but you just don't. There's just nothing that even comes close. This this just came with everything. Even compared to other uh, imports, this is a little bit more expensive, but I think it was a sweet spot because it comes with a few things others don't. Um, it's got better suspension components, bigger stub axles, bigger studs, um, better bearings. It's got parallel bearings, not uh, cone bearings, tapered bearings. Um, it comes with the entire annex, uh, D flapper bars, diesel heater, it has a, um, it's completely aluminium composite panel. Even the floor is an aluminium composite, whereas a lot of the other ones are timber. And I believe because this has that 
aluminium composite floor. Um, that the payload is better. This has got a one ton payload, so it's two ton empty, three ton loaded, uh, whereas others are only like six or 800 kilos, which is still not too bad. Um, but this was just better, it just ticked more boxes. Uh, on that note, weight wise, um, we did weigh the thing uh, loaded and we got it up to two and a half ton and that was fully loaded for our, you know, five months expedition on the road. So that was a 500 kilos of payload we had in it and that was with this pantry drawer absolutely stacked to the top with tins and cans and all the rest of it. That's with the um, water tank. We even converted the grey water tank to fresh water. So there's a couple of hundred litres of water in it. Two nine kilo gas bottles, diesel jerry cans, the whole lot. Um, so two and a half tonne and we had a ball weight of about 250 kilos. So pretty much bang on 10%. So it's not heavy on the front like some imports are. Yeah, I won't, I won't rip on any other brands here, but I will say that on our travels, we had a couple of, um, a few people approached us actually at caravan parks and whatnot which had very similar looking vans, but in other brands, there's two that are very similar. Um, and they had a, they mentioned that they were quite unhappy with little bits and pieces about their vans and they looked over ours and they always commented that ours looked um, like it had a better sort of finish and better quality and more solid. Um, so this is the only one I've, I've owned. So I'm not, yeah, I can't, that's why I'm not gonna mention the other brands because that could just be that one person's experience. Um, but yeah, this did seem to be better quality than um, some of the other similar looking vans. They all look very similar, but there's just, there's minor differences which make all the difference. If you are looking at buying an import camper and you're quite concerned that it's coming from China and you might not have that um, post-purchase backup, um, MDC are a pretty good company to deal with because they're massive. They've got um, workshops and showrooms and stuff pretty much all over the country. And they've been around a hell of a long time and they've sold thousands, you know, probably tens, maybe, yeah, probably tens of thousands of units. Um, so yeah, they're quite a good company to deal with. I wouldn't be too nervous about um, buying from them. But I should probably stress at that point that I have absolutely no affiliation whatsoever with MDC. I've never received uh, any sort of money or um, anything given to me uh, from them. I paid retail price for this. I paid 48 or 49,000 um, new. Um, so I can give you my honest, uh, unbiased opinion on the product. But do keep in mind that they probably had no idea who we were when we bought the thing, um, but, I, but I think uh, they were aware who we were uh, later on, especially when we went in for warranty. So our warranty experience um, may have been uh, biased by that. We'll never know. But I must say that we are on all the uh, MDC owners groups pages on, on Facebook and whatnot. And I would say that overwhelmingly, certainly in the last few years, I'd say the vast majority of customers are happy with uh, their product from MDC and that after sales support uh, and warranty support, I'd say most people are happy. And that was certainly our experience. So yeah, to wrap it all up, really good van. We're really happy with it. Um, we, but we're gonna get rid of it. <laughs> but we're gonna get rid of it. Uh, we probably will upgrade to something else um, just because we plan to have another child in the future. Um, and uh, we could put another, kit into this, but we, we just want to have a little bit more space. So we're going to look for a full size um, bunk van, mainly because we're planning to do another lap. Um, 2025, three and three quarter years, we're counting down now. Uh, we're going to have a year off and, and, and hit the road again. So we want to have a bit more room. This was certainly doable having a 13 foot van, um, but we want to have a little bit more space. Uh, people asked if it was annoying setting this thing up all the time, because obviously there's a bit more involved in this. It is a real hybrid. It's a hybrid between a camper trailer and a caravan. Um, there's a bit more involved. You've got to pop the roof, you've got to pop the back section out. No, it wasn't annoying. Um, uh, we, we did plenty of, I think pretty much half of our stops on our five month trip were only for one night and it never really bothered us. Um, having a pop top, um, someone asked me, were there, were there nights where the wind and stuff annoyed you? In 160 odd nights of camping, one night we, we let the roof down. Uh, we didn't pop it up and there was still enough room to move around and sleep and use the toilet and whatnot. The only reason we did that was we were camping uh, inside a, um, pretty much on the top of a bluff on the coast in some really, in a re really windy part of Western Australia and there was a high, high wind warning that night. I think there was like 60K gusts or something. So it was more sort of just in case, but um, we still slept soundly through the night. So that was cool. Uh, another thing people were wondering, um, a lot of people are asking me if I was going to convert this thing to lithium and they were a little bit surprised that I hadn't. Uh, I have got a lithium sponsor, uh, Off-Road Living, that I've, that I've used for a big lithium battery setup in the car. Um, and I will use them to put lithium batteries in either this van or the next van. 
But the reason I haven't yet um, is because this came with three big uh, 100 amp hour AGM batteries, so 300 amp hour in total, 300 watts of solar on the roof, and that was heaps. That was absolutely heaps. We never got anywhere close to running out of battery. Um, I had the 40 liter freezer in here um, set to, what is it, negative 19 degrees. Chock full of food all the time. Um, we had fans on every night. We watched TV every night. We did not need to plug into 240 volt power once this entire trip. Um, we didn't get air conditioning from you. Mm -hmm. We should have done. We didn't think we'd need it. Uh, in retrospect, we did, hey? Yeah, it would have been nice to have, even if we didn't have the generator, it would have been nice to have on the days it was really hot and we could have just gone to a caravan park instead of, you know, Free camping or whatever. We were, yeah. So in retrospect, we would have um, we would have got uh, air conditioning, and we will on the next van. Definitely. Yeah. And if we had have put air conditioning on this, then I might have regretted not going lithium batteries. That's sort of where I was getting with that. Um, if I if I had air conditioning, I probably would have wanted a massive lithium battery bank so I could run that off grid. Um, but I'll do that in the next build, and I'll show you how that is actually quite affordable um, if you go through the right mob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should we just reiterate the fact that we, we're really, really happy with this van? Mm. The only reason why we want something else is just because we do want to do another lap and we do want to have another child. Yeah. And so we'll be traveling with two. And I just think this would be... And big, a dog. And a dog as well. And he's quite big. And boisterous. So, yes. So, yeah, I do think if you've got more than one kid and you're traveling for a long period of time and then you're a dog as well, I think you'd, you would be better off with it bigger van. What I thought I might do to wrap up this video um, is I don't think I've ever actually shown you exactly how long it takes to set this thing up. Um, so I'll leave the camera running, I'll stick a timer up on the screen and we'll set this thing up and give you an idea of how long it takes. We are going to keep it hitched up because it's Easter weekend. Happy Easter by the way. Uh, it's Easter weekend and we're staying with our folks down south on their property and we're not planning to move the car. So we would quite often do this, just set it up, um, hitch the car, wouldn't bother dropping the stabilizer legs. So factor that in. But um, we'll show you the setup. That's it, it's pretty quick and easy. So um, that's the kitchen, the awning, um, the bed set up, shower and toilets in there ready to go, water's all plumbed up, ready to go. Um, the only other thing is if you were unhitching and leveling it up, uh, but like I said, we're already pretty level and we're staying hitched, so there you go, easy. So Tiff just wants to show you a couple of little things that we did to the van to make it a bit quicker to set up. So you would have noticed as I put the bed out, it was already made. So yeah, we keep it all made, flip it over. We use sleeping bags as our doona, so it's easy. Pillows were there, it was all done. So what do you use to keep the sheets on? Uh, these little, they're called sheet smoothers and they were from Spotlight. And then you would have seen in our videos as well, we had the black plastic, built as plastic just to make it easier to slide. Yeah. Uh, we did normally keep the table folded up and the TV, especially when we were doing off-road bumpy roads. Yeah, they'd go yeah, inside the mattress. Yeah, we'd just keep them in the middle and then we'd set them up as we arrived. A lot of, lot of people were worried about um, the back window. If you've got the privacy screens up, these things, you can quite easily knock them out of the track. So a lot of people were building frames and stuff for the back, but we never bothered, eh? It was yeah, never an issue. To be honest, we really destroyed these sometimes. Like Yeah, we had a toddler pushing on them every morning. Yeah, but 
if they do come out, you just run your finger down and smooth it and it's fine. Yeah. And then, oh, the toilets. Oh, that's one thing I didn't do. What? I didn't put the toilet paper on. That's something that always fell off in our travels. Yeah. <laughs> And then we'd always leave the always shower rows in the sink there. Yeah, so I just pop it back up when we arrived. There's quite a lot of like other little mods and stuff that we did to this. If you want to see them, um, I'll put a link in the description of our first video when we first brought this home. Yeah. Um, because we showed sort of more of the van off and we showed you all the little bits and pieces that we changed and modded. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's it. So cheers, guys. We'll see you in the next video when we're hopefully using this thing. We're going to be up north in this next week, eh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, going so, to Warra Station. Yeah, so we'll do a trip video for that. We'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers.